I'm Karen Elgersma at the University of Victoria, where the Naden Band and you Vic students have joined forces. Why? For the joy of music. And you're watching Go Island on Shaw TV. On today's show, we meet a fifth generation florist who's still playing Cupid in Oak Bay and a fashion designer who calls the Cowichan Valley home and the apprentices who are serving our fleets. All that and much more on Go Island. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. Hello, thank you so much for joining us on Go Island. Can you hear the sounds of instruments in the background? That's the sounds of the Naden and the UVic uh, orchestras warming up because boy, is there going to be a fantastic concert on mm -hmm. Friday night. Absolutely. Um, the Naden Band always goes beyond blowing me away. I'm always, it puts the hair up on my arms, kind of shiver up the spine kind of band. But this is a very special concert coming up on Friday night. Tell everyone who you are and what you guys are up to on Friday night here at UVic. Well, like you hit, you hit it right on the head. It is very special. It is a unique opportunity. It's the first time in the 50 year uh, you know, existence of the University of Victoria and the 74 year existence of the Naden Band that we've actually put these two wonderful musical organizations together as, as wholes to perform a joint concert for uh, the Canadian public. It's the first time ever. mentor these students. Oh, it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And you know, to be a good teacher, you have to be a good musician. And when you're teaching, you always have to look at a different thing. So it's, it's a whole new way of approaching music as a professional musician. And to be able to maybe pass something on, every one of the musicians in the Naden Band had some kind of an aha moment where they knew they wanted to be a pro, where they knew that they wanted to commit their life to music and to the arts. And you know, it usually comes from a teacher or a family member or a friend, you know, somebody that had influence on them and I know the Naden band members are very very you know aware of that and they're hoping that maybe they can pass something on if we spark interest in one or two or three to really push their career and really go for the professional side of things we've done our job well and who better to mentor yes. young students the Naden band <laughs> you have done such extraordinary things in our community over the years mm. um, you really have shown what it means to be a professional musician and to mean something to a, a community in such a, a huge mm. way um, um, for you, uh, wh what is it, this particular concert coming up, you have some cool things that you'll be playing too, things that um, maybe are our first uh, in Canada. Tell us, some. if people come on Friday night, what's the experience going to be like? Well, the experience is going to be one of, of, you know, great, great music played at the very highest level. Uh, we are playing an epic piece of music in the second half by David Maslanka, an American composer, and it's only the second time in Canadian history it's been played in Canada. Um, it's, it's a piece of music that uh, we can't do on our own. It's a piece of music that the UVic Wind Symphony can't do on their own. And as my uh, great colleague and friend, uh, you know, uh, Jean uh, says, uh, we do great things together. And it's mm -hmm. the first time that we're ever going to be able to get on the stage. And, and like Professor Dowling says, is that you know, together we really make music matter, and that's what counts. Friday night, you can come to the University of Victoria and mm -hmm. sit back and close your eyes or leave them open because it's fabulous to yeah. watch <laughs> and allow that music to just sweep over you because that gift of mm -hmm. just listening to music is one we don't give ourselves. We live in such an electronic world today. Yes. To go and hear live music yes. with trained musicians, mm -hmm. it's the best. Well, you know, live music is best. And you got trained professional musicians, but then you got the, the excitement and, and, and the drive and the energy of younger musicians who push the student musicians, push the professionals to go to a higher level. So we all raise our game for it, and it is a wonderful collaborative experience, and we are so blessed to be able to do it. As the band continues to warm up for us, uh, we're going to head to Oak Bay, where James Green met with a fifth generation florist who is still playing Cupid for all of us.
A bundle of bows. Abundant bouquets. And glossy blossom galore. A family-run florist in Oak Bay's Estevan Village has been saying it with flowers for over a century. We are the oldest shop still run by the same family. We are now five generations. Today it's Rob Jennings who proudly carries the family name into the future. A great-grandson who, since himself becoming a budding sprout, remembers the hard work of family members before him. My great-grandparents came to Canada in 1911. They had lived in Cheshire, England, and my great-grandfather actually worked for the flower shop that did the flowers for the palace in London. They came here and they were flower growers, so they grew flowers for other florists until 1920 when they decided to open the retail shop. So we have been doing flowers retail in Victoria in your community since 1920. Every year leading up to Valentine's Day, Jennings Florist is like a Cupid's corner, creating ideas to help customers communicate their affection. <laughs> There's a lot of expectations around Valentine's Day. We certainly get lots of calls. Um, the desperate young man who thinks that this might be the turning point in the relationship. This might get her to notice he's alive. This might get him a date. This might get him more than a date. Saying sorry, reaffirming your commitment. But Rob will be the first to admit that flowers don't always seal the deal. And that for the average Joe, shopping for flowers can be an extremely uncomfortable experience. For the guy who's not comfortable spending more than 10 minutes in a flower shop so he can get it, he can pay and he can leave before he's contaminated, you know, by the whole flower thing. Today's guidelines around what's acceptable for a Valentine's flower presentation are somewhat relaxed. For example, one rose can actually mean more than a dozen, representing that you found your one true love. I don't think you need red roses. I mean, um, it's, I'm noticing a lot of people that are just now taking down their Christmas decorations. Why bring red back into the house? And here's the good news. You won't have to break the bank in order to unbreak a heart. These days, uh, the competition, if you will, is a bit thicker. So the prices have tend to either leveled out or they've actually come down. Uh, 10, 15 years ago, you'd spend $100 on a dozen roses. Now you'll probably spend a maximum of $50 on a nice bunch wrapped up professionally with water tubes, uh, with a big bow, with all the trim to impress your special person. From Estevan Village in Oak Bay, I'm James Green. James Green, you can make flowers for your friend Karen Algersma too. I would love a bouquet. Thanks for that story, James. We are here at the University of Victoria. You can probably hear the sounds of instruments warming up behind us because the University of Victoria has joined forces with the Naden Band to create a one-of-a-kind experience for all of you to come out and see. Um, you are a professor here at the University of Victoria. Eugene, tell us um, about what this collaboration means to the students here at UVEC. It means, well, it's an enormous educational opportunity to sit next to professionals. And, you know, and we've, I'm proud to say that four of our former graduates our um, alumni are sitting in the band right now. So we have 10% of the band are UVic grads, which considering it's from all over Canada is a wonderful percentage. So to sit next to people who are playing beautifully and, and have, uh, you know, uh, go out and do it, um, it's, it's wonderful for them. It's a great educational opportunity. Is it an opportunity for them to learn that they can use their gift to also make a difference in community? Oh, I think so. And, and part of our mandate, just like theirs, is to take the Navy to the community. We must take UVic to the community. Yes. We're, we're not sitting here in isolation in Gordon Head. We're actually, you know, playing concerts. Our musicians, are, our young musicians are playing. Our faculty are playing. The Lafayette Quartet, of course, concertizes all over the world. Our students play here and around and you know and so these are all good things so, so we all take our but it gets our best game. We wouldn't be able to play this huge Maslanka symphony by ourselves. There's only 50 of us. There's only 35 in the Naden band so there's they couldn't play it but if we put our people together then we can come up with something that's greater than the sum of the parts. Now people 
Are you listening? Who should come to the concert here at the University of Victoria on Friday night? Everyone who loves music. And the, um, uh, they'll hear one of our graduates and Petty Officer Second Class Robin Jutras play a bassoon concerto. I'll be conducting that, and that will be with the UVic group. We'll hear a brass fanfare played by our musicians and, and the, and the Naden musicians. Um, they're playing a piece by themselves, uh, by Shostakovich. We're playing a, um, a, a piece by ourselves by Mercure. And then we all join forces under Matt Clark's direction for the Maslanka Symphony No. 8. Never heard before in Western Canada. Only one performance in Toronto, and we're the second. So that's, it's a great honor to, to be part of that. Once in a lifetime opportunity, so get your tickets, come out uh, right here at the University of Victoria. It is, uh, there's lots of seats. It's a it's beautiful sound in this auditorium. Um, and be part of uh, community, be part of live music, and be part of incredible music. The process of creating something special waits for no one. And it's really hard to sleep because it's just ideas go into your head. Sleep disturbed nights for a good reason though, because when you're passionate about something, you just have to keep going and going and there's always something new to do. And that's why I like it. As soon as you get bored, there's something new to make or something. And you'd think after more than 20 years of making clothes, interest levels might drop. But that's not the case for this designer. I love making dresses. Eliza Faulkner is a local Duncan fashion designer who's generating some buzz in the fashion world. She's preparing to attend the Canadian Arts and Fashion Awards in Toronto under the new emerging talent category. I'm excited. I mean, whatever happens, I'm going to keep doing it. It's kind of just a, like a bonus. Eliza studied and trained overseas. She recently moved back to the valley where she started creating her own label. <laughs> I think every day there's a moment when I'm like, this is absolutely mental. Especially when I moved back from London to Duncan and I was living in a little cottage making dresses. Like, kind of, I'm cutting out a pattern for a jacket. Watching her mother sew from a young age inspired her and taught her many of the skills she has today. My mother made everything um, as a kid, and I think I just learned from watching her. She's better than I am. She still is better, yeah. Yeah, she's really good. The fashion industry is a tough one to crack, but Eliza has already had some success. She was part of the Mercedes-Benz startup program and was named the one to watch by Western Living Magazine. I think there's always a mood in fashion, and I think if you're looking at blogs and looking online, and you're watching what people are wearing, I think you just pick it up by osmosis. It just happens, so it's not too intentional. Spoken like a true fashion designer, we no longer have to look any further than our own backyard for trendy, chic designer clothing. This is from this season, so the coats I really love and the wool skirt. Eliza puts like everything she has into her design. I love doing it. And to share it so and is on the clock 24 7. it's an all the time job it's like it's always always thinking of something and there's not enough paper to get your ideas on kind of <laughs> canadian fashion is in good hands when a designer's biggest problem is not enough paper in duncan i'm reggie cadley Some of the greatest music on South Vancouver Island is right here. Native Band, University of Victoria. Listen to that. Well, you can on Friday night right here at the University of Victoria and the Fuck War Center. We have to take a very short break, but stay with us when we come back. More great music and more great stories right here on Go Island.